Today I'm back at it for part six of the mud racing build. This might be the largest build we've ever done on dirt tracks, and I know that everyone's anxious for me to get out and test this thing, but the truth is, there's a few more pieces that I want to get done before we go to that point. Today I'll be tackling a couple of the big installs, but prior to putting back any plastics, I need to do one thing that's easy to overlook, but very important to do. Dielectric grease in all your electrical connectors is not hard to do and can save you a lot of time and money down the road. Considering we're racing this vehicle in the mud, it's gonna get wet. So we need to account for that. And with the connectors filled, there won't be room for the water to get in. It's cheap insurance for your electric parts and doesn't take very long to accomplish. Mud racing involves a lot of, well, mud. And to keep that mud out of not just the electronics, but also the differentials, the CVT, as well as the engine intake, it's the job of a quality snorkel kit. I've worked with SYA in the past. Kyle from snorkelyouratv.com has always had quality kits and the new Warrior Riser kit for the Gen 1s is everything you need and a good bit of style at the same time. While the red coloration was done custom by SYA for our build, the kit otherwise comes totally complete and ready to install and includes full color instructions. One of the really nice things about the SYA kit is that it comes 95% pre-assembled and any of the bends that you have to make are already pre-glued. Any of the other junctions that are made are all glueless, meaning that you can get this thing out of there if you need to do some work. Now, because the only drilled holes are in the upper pod plastics, it means I can install the snorkel kit with the plastic still off. The pod has mounting tabs that will line up to ensure I have everything installed properly. The center engine intake is a full two inch and does not restrict flow from the stock at all, so you don't have to tune for this kit. The CVT intake and exhaust are both 1.5 inches and offer ample airflow. <laughs> The rubber junctions on this snorkel kit look to be super beefy and really durable. Now the Warrior risers, after installing them, we can run our vent lines and go right up the backside. They have little reliefs that the vent lines fit right into. The vent lines may have been redone on this bike some time ago, but we're gonna put new stuff on just to be sure that it's all done properly, it's secured really well, and it's new. Many kits just have the vent lines coming up and then they bundle them in a zip tie to one of the snorkels, but the Warrior risers feature a built-in vent channel that allows two lines per risers. For a Can-Am with the updated tank and fuel pump will be one less, but adding the extra vent line for good looks is totally acceptable. The finished vent lines look super clean and they are secure. The final step is to attach the wear tips to the Warrior risers. Included in the kit is a special outerwear's material that can be installed onto the CVT and engine intake and add an extra layer of water and debris protection. With the kit finished up, it's clean, professional, and most importantly, functional. While we're up front, I figured we better do something about the radiator. While this has been upgraded from stock, it's down low and can easily get plugged. So we better put that thing up top for a relocate. And Rubber Down Customs came to the party again with a really cool rad relocate kit. Available for pretty much every ATV and side-by-side, -side, Rubber Down not only offers you options, they offer you custom graphics for your rad cover. I asked if they could do the Dirt Tracks DT symbol, and as you see, they can do that no problem at all. For a small fee, they will custom cut your cover and offer a variety of background mesh accents to make your build totally custom to you. The next step is to get the main bracketry installed and then mount up the rad and fan, so let's go ahead and do just that. This kit is really easy to install. Once our stock rad is out of the way, it's time to put the plastics and front rack back on the ATV. With those securely in place, we can mount up and relocate the base plates, leaving everything just a little bit loose. Now the cool part. This is a tilting XMR style kit, so you can access your rad easily after installation for maintenance and cleaning. This is a very cool feature and makes the rubber down kit super functional. The hinges are easy to install, and at this point it's on with the cover and in with the rad. Now on the non-tilting kits, we have to account for plumbing before we put the rad and the rad relocate up on the front. But because this kit tilts forwards, it's super easy to plumb it after we'd installed just by tipping it forwards and looking for the right placement for the lines. With the rad tilted up, we can locate the easiest path for the rad hoses and the electrical plug for the fan. Drilling is made simple and at this point, you can decide if you wanna keep or ditch the plastic center cover. It requires more holes to be cut and special attention taken for routing and in racing applications, we just don't need it. Once we've cut and plumbed the rad, then it's time to fill it and also burp it. Be sure to check the rad level over the next few rides after installing a relocate in case of trapped air releasing. At this point, we are dangerously close to the completion of our 2008 Project Mud Racer. Next week are just a few small components, things that are really important though, and then quite literally, it's off to the races. Thanks for watching this latest segment of Dirt Tracks TV. For more awesome content, feel free to click any of the links on the screen or subscribe to our YouTube page where we update daily with great content on a weekly basis.